Hi, this is Sean Hale with Sean Hale Woodcrafts. And today we're going to make ourselves a pretty large size picture frame out of some pine boards. Now I'm actually doing a 24 by 36 inch frame because I've got a big empty wall in my bedroom and we've just been wanting to put something there for years. Uh, and these picture frames, you know, at, at that size, you know, they can get up to $100 and even more. So I thought to myself, why not make it myself? Now the lumber is... Um, just some basically one by three pine boards and I tried to pick the best the best ones I could uh, without any knots or warps or bends in it. And I actually found a pretty a couple of pretty good boards. They were actually eight feet tall and they were only four bucks a piece so we got eight dollars of lumber going into this which which isn't too bad. Now obviously the square pine is a little bit plain looking. I'm going to use this little template I made um, to kind of give it some uh, decorations here. I'm going to put a cove in the middle that's like one inch wide. I'm going to put a couple slots on either side of the cove, round it over on the outside, put a cove on the inside, and these are going to be done with various tools. I'll be using the table saw to create this inside cove here, and probably the table saw to create these slots. And then for the roundovers and the cove on the inside, I'll be using my little bench top router table that you see here in the background and um, a couple of these inexpensive router bits. And since it's pine, uh, it'll be pretty easy to cut into. So let's get this thing started. So I'm going to cut some scrap wood to the same dimensions as my picture frame lumber. That way I can do test cuts without ruining my workpiece. For my cove cut, I'll be running this board across my blade at 80 degrees. And the blade is approximately 5 millimeters high. Now this may be different depending on how deep and how wide you want your cut. They do have a cove cut calculator online that you can check out. Or you can just experiment, either way. So let's test this out on some scrap wood. Looking good. So now that we got that cove looking nice, we can go ahead and clamp a board on the other side and that'll make a nice little track to guide the board over the blade. Okay, so let's start cutting our first cove. Now since I want my cove centered on the board, I'm going to go ahead and flip the board end for end and run it through again, and that will give it the same distance on both sides. This is really an optional step. This is kind of hard to see on camera, but the cove came out really nice. A little bit of saw blade marks that I was able to sand out really easy. I'll use this cove bit to put a cove on the inside edge of the frame. cove is looking really nice. Now for the outside edge, we'll go ahead and use this roundover bit. So on my table saw, I'm going to cut a groove between the cove and the roundover, and that'll give it a nice decorative line on the outside. So now we've got some great picture frame molding, 
And the best part is it was only 50 cents a foot. I like that. Now this is the area on the back where I'll be putting my glass and my backer into. And I can just use my table saw to cut this out. Well, you get the idea here. I did the second cut off camera. With the sliding miter jig I made for my table saw, I can cut clean and accurate 45 degree angles. Now these are pretty easy to make and there's lots of great YouTube videos that show how to make these. So now I've got a band clamp just kind of temporarily holding everything together so I can test fit my glass and make sure everything fits okay before I glue it. Here's my backer board. This is my glue up. I've got glue in all four corners and what I'm actually doing with that last clamp that you see me messing with is it's clamped to the table and then I'm using another clamp to kind of put it into square. Worked out really well. Very nice glue squeeze out, showing that I've got a nice contact there. Now since I don't have a biscuit joiner, this little jig here will let me cut splines in all four corners. And then I glue in a thin piece of wood and that just kind of reinforces all the corners. Now the tricky part here is making sure the frame is exactly aligned with the saw blade. so. I'm using some stop blocks to make sure that it's consistent on all four corners. I'm even going to snug those stop blocks up with a mallet just to make sure it's nice and snug. And we'll test that cut on a piece of scrap wood. Looking good. Now we can go ahead and carefully cut our splines. I'm going to slice up some of this scrap wood just a little bit thicker than the corner splines. After a few test cuts, this is my ideal thickness right here. So what I do is sand it a little bit at a time till I can get it to go all the way in with a nice snug fit. And that's just right, right there. So now we can just glue both sides, tap it in there nice and snug, and that'll really reinforce those corners. Once the glue dries, you can just cut off the excess with a flush cut saw. And then just smooth it out with a little sanding. Now I actually did wind up with some slight gaps 
on the inside of the front of the frame. So I'm putting a little wood putty in there. I'm going to clean it up with some denatured alcohol before we start our staining. I'm wiping on some red oak stain and I actually applied this three times and gave it like two hours between each application because I wanted a nice dark rich look to it. Using a disposable brush I got the stain in that little groove that I did around the outside as well. After letting that stain dry overnight, I hit it with three coats of lacquer. I gave the lacquer about an hour or two between each coat. Okay, so the frame is all stained and lacquered, and uh, all I have to do now is just put a wire across the back and uh, put my glass in, put my backing in, and of course the poster that's going in here, and we'll be set. So let's go ahead and finish this thing up now. I'll screw in a couple of D-rings to tie my wire to. Put in my glass. And our poster and the backer board. And we'll go ahead and twist on our picture wire. I like to cover up the ends of the wire with a little bit of painter's tape. And there it is. That is a thing of beauty right there. Okay, well the frame is finished and I'm really happy with this result. First of all, it's great to get this large, you know, 24 by, by 36 frame for about $30 in materials. Um, basically, I got the common uh, pine boards and the glass and the backer with some glazier points. And, um, it looks really nice. You know, that stain took that, that pine and made it look really rich. And I've got this great photo that I took in uh, Ketchikan, Alaska. And the whole thing all together looks great in our room. Anyways, I hope you'll like and subscribe to my channel. I've got some other great DIY videos up there. And if you browse through my videos, you can see what else I got. And if you hit that little bell icon next to subscribe, um, you'll get notified when I make new videos which isn't too often, you know, maybe once every couple months, month or two or something like that. But I'm always thinking of great ideas and new videos all the time. So I'll see you next time and take care. See ya.